Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. Um, in this series of videos we are working on the assigned homework problems for chapter 5, the exercises from group B. And note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help you if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still do not understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. Okay, so um, we left off with problem number 35, I believe. Yep, so we're now working on problem number 36. And it says here that, um, let me get my pen, pen, there we go. It says here that Titan Trucks reported sales revenue of 343000 a cost of goods sold of 246000 So in the back of my head, you know, as soon as they, I read sales revenue, I was thinking about the income statement. And that means revenues less expenses. And then when it said cost of goods sold, I'm thinking, okay, revenue less cost of goods sold gives me a gross profit. And then from the gross profit, I take away my expenses to get a profit and loss. Remember, um, you're, when you're reading the problem, if you understand the concepts, you keep all of these ideas and things in the back of your head. You don't know what you're going to use you know, for that particular situation. So it says here, number one, Compute Titan's correct gross profit, assuming the company's ending inventory is overstated by $3,600. Show your work. Okay, so um, based upon the information that we have, and this is why I said keep this stuff in the back of your head, if we have revenues of 343000 and then we have less our cost of goods sold of 246000 That means we have a gross profit of, let's see, seven, nine, ninety-seven thousand dollars Now, if our inventory, our ending inventory is overstated by 3600 Remember, in our inventory account, and I can just use, you know, make up a number. It doesn't matter what the number is. So I'm going to make this $103,600, okay? Because why I'm overstated by 100000 meaning, you know, I'm thinking, oh, my inventory value should be 100000 but if I'm overstated, I'm adding the uh, $3,600 to get the uh, uh, 103600 Okay, so if that's the case, if that's overstated, and I know that I have to take from my inventory and I make an adjustment to take out of the inventory and put it to cost of goods sold, that means my cost of goods sold is going to increase. All right, so I have this 246000 It should increase by $3,600 more. All right, so if that's the case, then... Um, 246,000 plus 3,600 is 249,600. So that's what my cost of goods sold should be, right? My cost of goods, cost of goods sold should be the 249,600. So what I'm looking at here is my corrected uh, amount should be revenue of 343 less cost of goods sold of 249600 and then that gives me a gross profit of $93,400 okay. so um, that's my corrected gross profit for this particular for number one okay now If we go in the opposite direction, okay, 
if we're going in the opposite direction because this is saying number one is overstated well uh, number two was understated okay well notice that um, if it's if my inventory is understated then I'm going in the opposite direction meaning instead of 246,000 you know I'm going to subtract out the eighteen hundred dollars okay which means my uh, cost of goods sold is $244,200. Okay, uh, think about it again. You know, I'll just plug in some numbers. Okay, so if my um, in ending inventory is understated by uh, $1,800, you know, it's supposed to be 100000 but instead, I'm going to have $98,200 in there because it's understated. 100,000 less 1,800 is this 982. Okay. Well, if it's 982, and if I have that in inventory, I have to make an entry, all right, um, between my inventory and my cost of goods sold. That means my cost of goods sold is going to go down because I have to put it back to inventory. So that's why I'm going to take the 246,000 and subtract out the 1800 so now I have 343,000 less 242 I'm um, 244 200 let me erase that less 244 200 and that's going to give me a gross profit of $98,800. Okay, so this is this is when it's understated, and this is when it is overstated. Okay, and this here was what we had as actual at the time. Okay, so I mean, you know, uh, that's the whole uh, concept and application of it. Um, to be honest with you, if I'm just working through this problem and I'm saying that, uh, you know, my uh, my inventory is overstated by 3,600, okay, you know, to me, what runs through my mind is, is okay, if my inventory is overstated, that means my cost of goods sold has to go, uh, uh, has to increase because I'm going to uh, take it out and put it into um out of my inventory and put it into my cost of goods sold. My, so my cost of goods sold goes up and that means my gross profit goes down. Okay. And that's the, you know, without working through the numbers, you know, that's the idea behind it. My inventory, right? I have to, if it's overstated, my inventory has to go down. So my cost of goods sold has to go up, which means my gross profit has to go down. Okay. And then, of course, if I'm uh, understated, that means my inventory has to go up. My cost of goods sold has to go down, which means my gross profit has to go up. Okay. So that's just another way of, of thinking about it. Okay, um, next problem. Uh it says, Gomez Auto Parts reported the following comparative income statement for the years ended April 30th, 2014, 2013. And during 2014, this, uh, Go Gomez discovered that the 2013 ending inventory, as previously reported, was overstated by $3,000. So ending inventory right there is overstated by $3,000. Prepare the corrected comparative income statement for the two-year period, complete with the heading for the statement. Um, what was the effect on the error on the net income for the two years combined? Explain your answer. Okay, so I'm not gonna reproduce this. Um, I'm just going to change the numbers here. Okay, so if this ending inventory was um, uh, was overstated by 3,000, that means it should have been 9,000. Okay, and if it was 9,000, right, then that means this number here, right, my cost of goods sold, 
goes up by 3,000. So that becomes 74.5. And then it's just, you know, then my gross profit revenues here, revenues here, less my uh, gross profit here means that uh, my gross, I mean, less my cost of goods sold means my gross profit becomes 44,500. My operating expenses stay the same of 23,000. So that gives me a net income of 21,500. Okay, now, <clears throat> since that ending inventory is 9,000, that for the next year, that becomes my beginning inventory. So 9,000 comes over here. Right? So my net purchases stay the same, which means my goods available for sale is now uh, $3,000 less. So it's 88,000 here. My ending inventory still stayed at 18, so that means my cost of goods sold is $3,000 less, so that's 70,000, which means my gross profit increases, so that's 73,000, and that means my net income becomes 44,000. Okay, so those are the changes that are made. I'm not reproducing this. You know, um, you just saw me, you know work through it all it is is just changing those those numbers okay but the whole idea being is is that okay well when my ending inventory um, is overstated by 3,000 you know you have to work through each and every line item for 2013 and remember because the ending inventory becomes the beginning inventory you also have to change the 2014 numbers now <clears throat> this if this ending inventory of 18,000 is correct if we were given information, a comparative income statement that had 2015, okay, um, all of the 2015 numbers would be correct because this 18,000 is an ending inventory. And if there's no change to it, then our 2015 numbers would be correct. So realize that where you have the mistake, you, you have to work through all of the, the math, you know, into the following year. And if you keep having a mistake that follows that, you know, you just have to keep rechecking. But in this case here, um, even if we had 2015, we wouldn't have any uh, additional changes to be made because our numbers would would be correct at that point in time. Um, it's only affecting those two particular years. Okay, so it says here, what was the net effect of the error on net income for the two years combined? Okay. Um, you know, the, the uh, solution says the net income for two years combined is the same in both cases, right? So, you know, it's 44000 plus 21.5, which gives me uh, 65.5 is my net income combined for the two years. Um, the sum of the correct amounts equals the sum of the incorrect amounts, right? beginning error in 2014 offsets the ending inventory error in 2013 so yeah when you're um, you know when you're overstated in one year okay so here we're overstated so that means in 2014 we're understated okay and uh, because one is over and the other is under it ends up being a wash meaning it balances itself out there's no difference in the net effect if you're looking at only one particular year, then yeah, you have to say, okay, that was overstated. If you're looking at 2014, you have to say, yes, that's understated. But when you're talking about the two, the one mistake washes itself out over the, the course of the two year period. Okay, so that's it for those two problems. And I'll see you in the next video, um, uh, you know, for the next problem. And if you, you know, you don't understand the concepts, you know, feel free to contact an instructor.